Satu, welcome back. Hi, thank you, Boomer. How are you? Oh, I'm doing excellent. It's uh, it's a nice sunny day here in Amsterdam, and I'm sitting in my little lab at home, uh, you know, podcasting, which is probably one of my favorite things to do. Excellent. So that's what you should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right? Positive attitudes, positive yeah. attitudes, which is going to be what we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the, the topic of attitude. But before we do that, uh, should we talk to people about our throwdown? Oh, yes. Let's do that. So the throwdown is something that Sasha and I have put together, and it's about 300 to 500 words, uh, a collection of articles, research we've done, things and technology we use and find effective in the goal of performing better. That could be both physically and mentally. And so if you wanted to get this, because it is highly curated, we do spend quite a bit of time on it and think of it as a way to filter your performance information, you can head over to decodingsuperhuman.com slash throwdown, spelled exactly as it sounds, throwdown, to find out more. But Satu, should we get back to the podcast? Yes, please. I'm very Excellent. excited about this topic. So this is one of your specialties, attitude. Yeah. And, you know, you and I were talking about this beforehand, and we both like the word attitude over mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of attitude, can we talk a little bit about how our own attitude shapes the world for us? That is a big question. A uh, very important question to start with, because that is the number one uh, thing that shapes the world and ourselves um, in everyday life. I think whatever you do, if you have the wrong attitude towards it, it won't work or you won't succeed. It's that simple and that hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's talk about uh, conditioning because here is something that I didn't really think about too much. I thought that people were either positively conditioned or negatively conditioned, but do you mind just talking about how we're kind of predisposed to being negatively conditioned? Yes. Um, there's really the basic research that shows uh, psychologically how our brains tend to work. And that is that if we have, let's say, a positive thing and a negative thing right in front of us, our brain is going to attack the negative first. That's what we're going to focus on. That's what we're going to see. That's what we hear. Um, that's what we want to sort of uh, tackle and solve. That's how we are. That's how our brains function. And that's what makes it so freaking difficult to get the positive out of things and have the positive, if you want to call it mindset or attitude that we like to call it um, in everyday life, because it doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come automatically. We have to train our minds and brains. So I'm going to share a little bit of a personal story here, and I would love to hear also, Satu, how you've kind of done this, because for me, you're right, negatively conditioned, I guess, is sort of, that would describe me for the majority of my life. Um, growing up, I was always just sort of this, I had this perfectionist attitude, but it was also just a matter of... You know, I always thought about sort of the worst that could happen, this sort of negative negative attitude, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that would kind of manifest itself in many ways. When I worked in finance, it wasn't – it was very common for me to blow up at people. You know, mm. you start to – somebody interrupts your flow and all of a sudden, you know – you just end up blowing up at people, yeah. but there's, there's a better way, right? Like you don't have to be a complete jerk. You can be, you can be a, just a genuinely good person. And yeah. a lot of that comes with just shaping this thing we called attitude. Yeah. So here's an even harder question for you because I'm full of hard questions. Today. Uh, that's good. <laughs> How do we shape our attitude? Um, yes, that is a difficult question or the question is not difficult, but the actual action is because it 
requires motivation and determination. So uh, said another way, we can't just sit here, do nothing and become positive. Is that right? No. Yeah, exactly. You have to train your brain, as I said earlier. Uh, so you need to first become conscious about this thing. Then you need to consciously find situations and discussions, conversations that you are in and make the conscious choice to hear at least two messages, not just negative, but the negative and the positive, or actually then focus on the positive. Um, it could be as simple as you are receiving feedback from your colleague and the colleague says, well, this went pretty well, the thing that you just did, but actually now the other part of it, it didn't go so well. I think that's something you should focus on in the future. So our brain, what does it hear? Ah, I need to become better at this and that because there was something that didn't go well. And what if you would focus more on the positive, the other message that you just heard? What do you think might happen? That's a genuine question to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as I sit here and say, you know, generally speaking, if I think about 80% of my life, yeah. I generally focus, I, I am that person who focuses yeah. on the negative and I'm like, Absolutely. you know, hell, uh, you just told, you know, I gave a speech to 30 people, 28 yeah. of them liked it and then two that didn't. Was, mm. And uh, for whatever reason, I'm like, okay, two, what, what did I do wrong? And then you get the information, you're like, oh my God, I have to be this much better, right? Yeah. I guess if you reframed it, this isn't easy though, right? Like just no. reframing it makes, is so difficult because I naturally, and maybe this goes into why negative news is so successful too. Yeah. You know, I naturally, I, think, I, I naturally am just kind of want to focus on getting better, but maybe there's a better way. Yeah. Maybe you can actually get better with focusing on what you already know and what you're good at. And becoming better at those things instead of trying to tackle every weakness that you ever could have because we all have weaknesses and there are plenty of them but if we just focus on them i don't think you can become a superhuman so should we train our strengths yes and make sure that the weaknesses won't eat our strengths i would okay. say okay so let's go in out. let's go into a couple of things you said here because um, becoming conscious of this, of any habit, really, it's a habit. It runs yeah. automatically. And so becoming yeah. conscious of this is actually a difficult first step. Yeah. How do we recognize that this is playing out in our everyday life? How, and any tips, tricks, tools that we can give people there? When you're having dialogues with people, whether it's at work or at home or with your friends, um, be present. The more present you and the more focused you are, the more likely it is that you actually are able to hear all the signals, all the messages, and not just going randomly with your animal instincts and attacking the negative ones. Um, it could be also that you have, um, you have a problem at work. Are you going to just focus on the problem and trying really hard, focusing and focusing and trying, trying to solve it? Or are you actually trying to see the positive around it? Like, if I solve this problem, what am I going to achieve? And that already trains your brain to see problems as something that develops you rather than, oh, it's such a negative feeling and I have all these problems and that creates stress. So it's about self-coaching, about coaching your mind in everyday life. Just like recognizing the language that's running through you, right? Mm -hmm. And language is one of the most powerful creation tools that we have. But this is, this is very, very helpful. Um, if you were to say one thing, I guess, let, let's formulate this question delicately. The first thing you would do to start recognizing this stuff, would you write it down? Would you start journaling? Do you, do you meditate on it? Uh, I mean, is there a simple 
start point or do you just have to start being coming aware of what you're saying? Um, rather than becoming aware of what you're saying, become aware of other people. What are they saying? Because that is a nice way or maybe easier way of learning uh, to become conscious. See what's happening around you. See how other people react and try to pick up those positive signals. And then second step is start digging deeper into the positive. Because it is so easy to ask why something doesn't work. But it's not that easy to ask someone, why are you so good at that? Why does this work? Why is it going so well for us? We don't have those discussions. So consciously switch on digging deeper into the positive signals. And yes, if you want to write them down, do it. Whatever works for you. But identify and dig deeper. So... I'm going to share another little, little story here. I, again, I, I'm not a naturally positive person. I have to work a lot on that. And one of the things that helped me along my journey in terms of just like switching that mm. was just simply writing down things I was grateful for. It sounds so simple. It sounds so crazy, but it's worked for me and uh, great numbers of our clients that just taking three things, writing it down every day and saying a person, a place, an opportunity for the day is just a great way to start your day with a more positive mindset. Nice. Uh, don't try and go on repeat here because there's a natural tendency of people to just sort of write the same three things every day, but try and make it hard. Um, being, make the person go back to like high school teachers or whomever, uh, make the thing something around you and change your environment every once in a while, and then make the opportunity something that comes forward during that day. And that's worked very, very well. It's a great way to just get started and get ready to kick ass during the day. Definitely. All right, the sponsor for today's podcast is a member of the toolkit that I use on an almost daily basis to upgrade my state of being and have used it actually for the past couple of years. The guys over at Neurohacker Collective have done a fantastic job. You've heard me rave about the original stack as well as quality of mind on the show. But now I'm so excited because the suite of products has grown. You have Qualia Focus for that near-term bump. You have Qualia Mind Caffeine Free for all my caffeine-sensitive listeners out there. But their latest product, which just came out, is oh so exciting. It's called Eternus, and it's a 38-ingredient formula containing the most researched and premium ingredients on Earth for supporting cellular health. This is key to combating the symptoms of aging. If you want to check out Eternus, Qualia Mind, Focus, or any of the Neurohacker products, go over to neurohacker.com and plug in the code BOOMER. You'll get an additional 15% off your order. Enjoy. So let's say we started to make a little progress on this and mm -hmm. we actually get to a point where we're now, um, we're conscious of this. We're starting to make some strides along being more positive in our everyday life. How do you really seal the deal? How do we close that positivity in there and kind of lock it in. Is there a way to do that? Or is it like a continuous build? I would say it's a continuous build, but of course, the more positive you focus, the more positive things you focus on, it, typically it creates more positive outcomes. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to give you one example, like this is where you start and that's where you end. No. I would say you just train your mind in everyday life constantly. It, and by this, I don't mean that you need to erase everything that is negative and just ignore things. No, of course not. But the fact is that we have it much easier to focus on the negative. So I wouldn't be worried about that. That's still going to be there. Mm -hmm. but rather challenge yourself to take the next step and dare to focus on the positive things, because that can be really scary at times as well. It can be very difficult to ask someone that question to dig deeper into something like a success or positive feedback that you just received because it sounds stupid. But mm -hmm. try it in small steps and it will become a bigger positive outcome, I'm sure. Absolutely. And be careful who you surround yourself with too, right? It's um, 
we go back to dynamic systems and look at sort of our general environment and where we are, the people you spend all of your time with ultimately may shape that mindset. And yeah. one of the, you know, I would love to hear how you've kind of focused on surrounding yourself with better people in terms of how you do that in everyday life. Mm. Um, I know that not everyone can naturally be focusing on the positive and it can't be really the similar people that I am. I'm not saying that I'm the most positive person at, at all. I think but, you're very positive. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've trained my mindset since 10, 15 years back. Um, but however, that probably comes more naturally for me than for others. But the fact is that I think we need all sorts of people and not everyone should be a copy of myself. Now, that also is a positive way of seeing this type of negative or more, um, yeah, just different people. And, and I think you can try to influence and impact the others around you in a positive way, as long as you accept and acknowledge the fact that they are different. Uh, trying to force your own style on others probably won't work. Um, appreciate the fact that you might come across someone you don't like mm -hmm. and actually see that as something that you can learn from. And once again, now this is me training my mind to see and hear something positive. Um, instead of thinking, oh, these annoying people who always disagree with me. No, okay, just let them disagree and see what could be the positive outcome of that difficult discussion, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just constant training your brain. Absolutely. I, I like what you just said there because I've at times gotten almost ruthless in terms of the people that I will let extremely close to me to make sure that they're positive. And mm -hmm. I don't think that that is necessarily the best way. No. Yeah, the five people you surround yourself with are ultimately going to influence you. And I do think there's a lot about to say about that. But when you start mm -hmm. extending beyond those five, you know, letting some op opposing viewpoints into your life definitely serves. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no problem. It's a pleasure. So we've given everybody a positive ad attitude. They're all ready to just go out there and win, which is going to be awesome. Anything more we should add on attitude before we sign off? Now that's all from my side. We can talk another time more about this. I'm oh, sure. we're going to talk about this a lot because it is such an important topic. But the show notes for this one are decodingsuperhuman.com slash attitude. Satu, have an absolutely excellent day. You too, Boomer. Thank you. Superhumans, before you go, if you enjoy the episode, if you enjoy all of our episodes, head on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating. It would really, really help get the word out on what we're doing here at Decoding Superhuman. Feedback. If you want to give us direct feedback or you want to see us cover a specific topic, whether on the shorter episodes or the longer episodes, head on over to your email and email us at podcast at decodingsuperhuman.com. For those of you who have sent emails to that address, you know that I respond to every single one. And then lastly, would you like 300 to 500 words of highly curated information on how to upgrade performance? If so, head on over to decodingsuperhuman.com slash throwdown and you'll get our next issue of the throwdown, which is our 300 to 500 word highly curated digest, if you will on what's going on in the field of performance. Enjoy your day, superhumans, and thank you from the bottom of my heart for tuning in to today's episode.